in traditional React apps, so in React apps where you are not using Next.js, you set up routing like this. You have some code in one of your React components where you do add various route-related components from React Router DOM, which is a great library. And there, of course, isn't necessarily anything wrong with this setup, but this is not how we'll do it with Next.js. There, we don't install React Router, and we won't write any JSX code or any JavaScript code at all when it comes to defining our routes and our page structure. Instead, with Next.js, we create React component files. So regular React component files in a special folder, as you will see, and we will then let Next.js infer our routes in our project from that folder structure we set up there. We use the special pages folder for that because Next.js will automatically look into that pages folder to infer our route structure. Now, how does this work? Well, let's consider this example, this example pages folder. Here in this pages folder, we would have an index.js file, and then as a sibling to that file, we have the about.js file. And then we have the products folder as a sibling to the index and about.js files, so as a sub folder in pages. And in products, we have two additional JavaScript files. The index.js file again, but now in products instead of just pages. And then a file with a rather strange file name, square brackets, and then id inside of those square brackets, .js. Now I'll come back to this strange looking file name in a second. Let's first of all have a look at what Next.js would do. It would look at this pages folder and now infer a couple of routes we want to support. For example, based on index.js, it would infer that this should be our main starting page for requests to our domain slash nothing, so for an empty path. For about.js, it would infer that we, for example, want to load an about page here, so it would in the end just render the component returned in the about.js file, and it would load that component for our domain.com slash about. So it takes the file name as a path, as you can tell, with the exception of index.js, that's a special file name, which it will assume as the root path for the given folder in which you are. So directly in the pages folder, index.js would be our root path, an empty slash after the domain. Inside of products, for example, index.js would be loaded for mydomain.com slash products. So not slash products slash index, but just slash products slash nothing loads index, just as just my domain slash nothing loads index in the pages folder. If we have a file named differently, like about.js here, then this file name is used as a path segment. An alternative to naming a file about.js, therefore, would also be to create a subfolder named about with an index.js file inside of it. That would lead to the same result, because index.js files are treated in that special way I just explained. And of course, we're going to see all of that in action soon. Now, what about this strange square bracket file name here? This is a special notation we can use to add a dynamic path. So for example, if we have the product detail page here, so if we show some content for a selected product, then of course we wanna show that same page for different products. So our URL would look something like this, our domain.com slash products slash and then the ID of a given product. And of course, we can have multiple products and therefore multiple IDs. And that's why this is dynamic. The ID isn't always the same. And as a developer, we can't predefine our different detail pages for the different products because A, we might not know in advance how many products we'll have. And B, even if we knew, it's always the same page. 
just the data on the page will be different. And that's why Next.js supports such dynamic paths as well, with that special file name. So that is the equivalent to defining such a dynamic path with React Router like this.